This McFarlane Batman is a real dick, Grayson. I can say that in the first seven seconds, right? I'm gonna be fully honest with this one. I'm not really well versed on this specific arc for this turn of the mantle for Batman. I just know that technically speaking, it's not Bruce Wayne underneath the cowl. It's Dick Grayson, the original Robin. And so I'm not sure how I feel about the design itself that's portrayed not just in the comic art, but even the lifting of the panel from said comic that is then utilized for either the trading card or the back of the box. Gotta be honest, I'm not really sold on that design, but at the same time, I feel like it kind of it really does a faithful interpretation of kind of conveying the message that, yeah, this is not Bruce Wayne. He's supposed to be a little lankier, a little bit kind of awkward and unique in that sense. So my preference as far as design choices is left a little bit to be desired when it comes to the Dick Grayson portrayal of Batman. But this gave McFarlane the optimal chance of delivering on a figure for those that were willing to take on this portrayal. Especially if when it comes to the eye of the beholder, maybe some people do really like this portrayal. And you can see that's predominantly utilizing the gray and black suit. So it's very minimalistic, very straightforward. And as far as actually taking that inspiration from the comic and kind of replicating the suit, it does it pretty favorably. I would argue that it breaks down to three major pillars as far as design choices to really make sure that you're getting the Dick Grayson Batman. One of them is probably the one that has the most unique form of color which is going to be the gold plated belt which is pretty unique and pretty stylized with a very huge bat symbol there on the front and then not much going on as far as compartments. You just have those little like oval circles compartments there on the left and on the right kind of encompassing the entirety of the belt and overall it's a nice little attractive point that kind of hones in on your focus when it comes to actually looking at the display purposes of the figure itself because the rest of it is just straightforward gray and black it's just gray and black gray and black gray and black so your eyes are really drawn into that belt and for the most part i feel like it's sculpted and painted very accurately then the second detail would have to be the gauntlets themselves. This is probably, like I said, some of the more minimalistic gauntlets that I've ever seen on a Batman figure. Where it's mainly circling around the wrists and not much of the forearm. And therefore you're going to have some much smaller hooks there on the sides of his gauntlets to kind of build up on the spikes that Batman is known for. So... I'm a little indifferent on these. Like I said, it's unique. It's different. It kind of has a new flavor of the month style to it, but it's not necessarily my favorite form of gauntlets. And they'll become a little bit less favorable when we get down to the latter portion of this review. But for the most part, everything else is pretty straightforward, pretty basic, pretty... I don't know. Like I said, minimalistic is really the term that comes to mind when it comes to the design of the suit itself. Except the bat symbol itself... I know that it's trying to evoke a little bit of what you get from the bat symbol that you see in the comics for this Batman Reborn Dick Grayson version. But me, from the outside looking in, I just can't help but really just look at the bat symbol and just think, Batman Arkham. I don't know what it is, but there's just something very Arkham-esque about the bat symbol that just makes me feel like they just took the Arkham symbol, tweaked it a little bit, and stamped it across his chest. It's not really embossed or anything like that. It's just a paint app, so not much that I can really comment on right there. And then we get to the head sculpt, which, again, kind of really reflects the sentiment that I feel towards the gauntlet, which is that I'm very indifferent. Again, it's very unique, so points for the efforts on making it very staple to a Batman that is not Bruce Wayne. It's meant to be a much more stylized character, a little bit more unique, a little bit slimmered down, and the cowl, I think it's probably one of the best representations of that to kind of really hone in on how much of a slimmer guy he is, how much of a different take on a Batman mantle this is going to be, specifically from the comics, but there's something about this head sculpt that I just don't really gravitate towards too much. There's, I don't know. I just, I'm not a big fan of it. I don't necessarily hate it. Like I said, I like that it's unique. I like that it's different and it's not trying to replicate past portrayals of Batman because it's not meant to be Bruce Wayne. But like I said, I'm just kind of repeating myself at this point. I just feel like it's a little too... Frank, uh, not Frank Miller, but rather Mark Miller, author of Kick-Ass. 
And you know who I'm talking about. The other character that most definitely was trying to do his best to be a Batman-esque-like character. Big Daddy, played by Nicolas Cage in the movie. And I would say that his portrayal in the movie is a bit more to what I think about when I look at this cowl. In terms of the brow, in terms of the narrow eyes, the way that this overall forehead and top of the head sculpting is really designed. Of course, this is most definitely Batman with the pointed ears, but... The way that the mouthpiece is just a little bit on the smaller side and the cheeks are just completely covered up so it's not as wide as traditional mouth plates are on a Batman cowl, that's to me what I'm thinking about the most is Big Daddy from Kick-Ass. I'm sorry, I just couldn't really help it. So that just kind of, like I said, is really where my stance really is as far as this overall design of this Dick Grayson Batman. But what helps alleviate that are two things. One is the knowledge that this is not necessarily Bruce Wayne. It's a completely different version of Batman. The second would have to be that in McFarlane Toys form, he comes with what is likely a staple that is here to stay from McFarlane because it's very, very difficult to look at further releases of Batman from DC Multiverse and not expect, to some capacity, a wired cape. We have no rubberized capes here. Once again, we have a wired cape with an actual form of felt material, except this time it's not necessarily cloth, but more so of like a nylon sort of fabric that is now kind of covering up the entirety of the stitching. But what I really do appreciate that I saw before, at least the method or the technique that was utilized in the Robin of the Batman Forever Wave, was taking the ends right here and instead of just having the wired be embedded into the cape, it's just kind of pleated and then sewed into this outer rim. So I really do appreciate that technique. As far as the actual material, I'm not the biggest fan of this nylon. I really would have appreciated it better if they had brought back the fabric, the cloth fabric, the double stitched fabric from the Batman and Robin, uh, I'm sorry, from the Robin from Batman Forever Wave. That would have been awesome and sick, but at the same time, it looks like those are going to be very unique cases that McFarlane's going to have to pick and choose to see which one he would want to probably put that on there so that the costs can kind of make sense. I'd imagine that maybe not too many people are familiar with the Dick Grayson Batman, so he opted for the cheaper nylon material that will probably be a little bit better on effective cost, but at least it comes with a much more formidable wiring that makes p positioning and molding of the cape itself. And then, of course, you're going to have the trimming here towards the bottom that makes it look like Batman. My only little issue that is likely an isolated case, I don't believe this to be a widespread QC problem, but just take note to look at the bottom parts of your the trimmings for your wired cape but it because it looks like mine was cut and trimmed just a little uh, askew to the point where the little bit of plastic that is designed to cover up and protect the wire is seeping through it they didn't really trim it shorter than the fabric itself so it's kind of peering and poking its head a little bit right there so it's a little bit of a nuisance a nice sword to look at granted it's an easy fix all i gotta do is just go in there with the scissors and trim it so i will be doing that after the review but i just thought i'd leave it in there to kind of showcase here in the video but just make sure that yours doesn't necessarily have that problem and since i've acquired this figure i have seen it a couple of more times in some local walmarts and when i peeked through uh, the packaging i didn't necessarily see a problem like this so it does look like it's just going to be a once in every few cases so just Take mind of that in case yours happens to have that same QC problem as well. Now we're on the portion of the review where I may or may not trigger some folks because typically here's where I tackle the articulation since it looks like the possibility of the cape will also go and pair very well with certain poses that you could put this guy in. But it's through my experimentation of the joints and such, which I always really it's one of the first things that I go to when pulling a figure right out of the box is to make sure that it's posable, that it's really well articulated, that's not going to have any QC problems as far as joint sticking, etc. And it's during that phase that I discovered that we do have a form of retooling when it comes to the Batman Reborn Dick Grayson figure. Because from the offset, I definitely recognized this portion of the figure to be a little bit on the familiar side. And that's where I deduced very strongly, and if you have some evidence to back up the contrary, please let me know in the comments. But it does look like the majority of the arms and pretty much the upper half of the body is lifted from the Nightfall buck. And it looks like 
the Nightfall figure is going to be a definitive fallback for McFarlane toys through various iterations. Not only do we have the essential Nightfall figure that debuted either earlier last year or late last year, but since then we've gotten the black and gray variants. This year we got the Nightfall 2-pack that was sought after with the wired cape, came bundled with Bane. And then it does look like he's been sneaking it in a couple of more times with the manga Batman as well as the recently released Bullseye Platinum Chase figure. And it does look like now I'm going to have to do some form of ranking for the Nightfall buck just like I did for the Batman Hush buck that was previously the most utilized buck ever created or ever reutilized, reused. And it's funny that I mentioned the Batman Hush because as I kind of go down... I can't tell, and this is the one where I truly haven't really set on any kind of stance as to whether or not this is true. It looks like it's just the Nightfall buck for the remainder of the figure as well as far as the legs is concerned. Specifically when we get to the knees is really where it tipped me off that this is probably still the Nightfall. But it does look like a little bit of retooling and reassembly was designed for the thighs. The thighs kind of look like they are lifted from the Hush buck as well as the boots, the way that the boots are kind of sculpted. But then a little bit of the retooling and the assembly for this part area right here is really where I start to then go back to my original stance of thinking that this entirety of the figure is mostly uh, the use of the Hush... I'm sorry, the uh, Nightfall buck. And then repainted and retooled with a couple of applications to then favor the Batman Reborn Dick Grayson. Again, especially with the belt as well as the head sculpt. And speaking of said head sculpt, I think it's because of the way that it's a re-sculpted and redone completely from the ground up brand new head sculpt that going on the joint for the neck, it's a little bit on the tighter side. It's pretty favorable when it comes to rotating 360 degrees, but tilting down is completely stagnant. He cannot look down whatsoever. It just sticks right about right there, not going forward any further. But when it comes to looking up, it's a little bit more on the decent side as well as tilting side to side. But still, I feel like I've seen figures that I have been able to do better. But because this is a Nightfall buck, the shoulder articulation is actually really, really awesome in terms of rotating the arm 360 vertically all the way around as well as really proper extension towards the sides and even a little higher than the 180 degree angle right about right there and because of the way that the rods are kind of connected to the main body right there along with the washer piece it's not too loose but also not too tight to then allow you a little bit of butterfly rotation and shrugging and almost a whole amount of swiveling 180 degrees all the way around so good butterfly movement forward and back shrugging motion up and down the biceps can definitely rotate 360 degrees Two joints at the elbows that are fully able to bend all the way up so for the most part we're really doing well as far as utilizing the the nightfall buck in a very favorable way towards the articulation and everything's golden up until we get to the wrists which are arguably the part that set articulation could have been awesome but unfortunately due to the way that they had to sculpt these gauntlets right here it really ended up disappointing me and becoming a bit of a crux on the figure itself because even though the wrist can definitely rotate 360 degrees no problem, it's once you get to pivoting inwards and outwards that is incredibly, for lack of a better term, handicapped in this sense because bending them inwards is not too bad. You can kind of get it nudged up and moving up like so. But when it comes to bending and extending the arm towards the sides, you can kind of see right there that the hands themselves are starting to part and almost detach from the wrist itself. And that's because of the way that the overall wrist cuff of the gauntlet is sculpted in a way that it just kind of gets in the way of the hand piece itself. So when doing so, the hand then starts to nudge out and detach. Which I know is a function for the accessories that we're going to momentarily cover. But at the same time, I don't want my hand to be coming apart every time that I want to at least bend the wrist in any kind of direction. And it looks like that's something that's just going to happen almost each and every single time that I'm going to be articulating the hinge inside of the wrist joint. And that's a major problem because typically Batman figures don't have this sort of problem. But it looks like it's going to be a cross for the... Dick Grayson Batman to bear. But take comfort in knowing that that's probably the biggest problem with the articulation since the rest follows the same blueprint as the Nightfall Buck. You have the mid-torso cut that can definitely rotate 360 degrees. Even though I could have benefited a little bit better when it comes to crunching inwards and outwards, it does it pretty 
decently, but I've seen other McFarlands do a better job of crunching in any kind of direction, even side to side. But that's what the waist is for, because the waist can definitely crunch and extend towards the back and towards the front and side to side much more favorably, but at a trade-off. And that would have to be that the diaper piece, because of this newfound belt that is sculpted all the way around it, it doesn't really allow any kind of rotation. Rotation is actually kind of abysmal when it comes to the waist. So if you're looking for any kind of twisting side to side, you're going to have to rely on the mid torso. But if you want to crunch much better, you're going to have to do for the waist right there. That definitely favors that a whole lot better. Then the top leg joints can definitely extend towards the front pretty decently, right about that far, and extend towards the back before it gets to said diaper piece that is a little bit on the hindering side, but still... Not much that I can really complain about too much when it comes to extending the legs towards the back. Towards the sides is where things get just a little scary with the cracking of the joints. You can hear right there, it's a little bit too ratcheted for my comfort. But on the bright side, it does extend almost a full 180 degrees, which would make an awful lot of sense. Considering that this is in fact still Dick Grayson, part of the Flying Grayson. So uh, acrobatics and flexibility should be part of his character. So that's good to see that it's right there. And then when we get to the knees is where I definitely got my confirmation that I think this is in fact the Nightfall buck and not necessarily a crossbreed between the Nightfall and the Hush Bucks because when we get to the knees, they can fully bend all the way up, no problem, and are even semi-ratcheted so they hold in place and are very firm. But when it comes to flexing them and straightening them up back to their original position, they have this really weird thing where the top joint, the top piece right here, the top pin, extends even further for some weird reason to the point where it makes his legs look ultra broken. <laughs> and I remember having this sort of issue with the previously released Nightfall figures as far as that original blue and gray, or lighter gray I should say, the black and gray, and even the most recent Nightfall 2-pack which I have yet to cover in the video, my apologies. But, you know, I've been getting really busy with all these new early releases and early finds at Walmart. But I'll eventually get to that figure, but it's just a little bit of spoiler for that figure. The knees have the same issue where this knee just flexes towards the, at least the top part, the top joint right there, flexes a little too far back to the point where it almost makes his leg look like a gun. You can literally hold his knees or one of his legs in a very gun-like position to the point where it looks like Dick Grayson is finally going to avenge Bruce's parents. The wrong way but that's just a little detail that i noticed it's not necessarily going to impede the articulation especially since like i said it's a little semi ratcheted so once you kind of flex it and pop it back into a neutral position it doesn't necessarily become a problem so it's not going to rear its ugly head necessarily so don't worry about that especially when you got really good ankle joints that i really like that are flush with the rest of the boot allow the foot to bend downwards and upwards very fluidly but also still very firm in place you can fully rotate 360 degrees horizontally no problem at the top of the joint but can even pivot in place at the bottom of the joint inwards and outwards at an inclination to then give them a little bit better footing as far as positioning and the toes can still fully bend all the way up no problem so you can see right there that I had to breeze through a good majority of the articulation because it's mostly still taking the best parts of that nightfall buck except for the wrists and a little bit of the head are probably the ones that suffer and are probably the greatest casualties as far as the retooling of the overall bug to favor this new design of Batman, which, again, kind of hold back its potential. However, there's one other little detail that I thought was not only gaining points for being unique, but also additional points for being kind of cool and something that I feel is a little on the underrated side when it comes to accessories for any version of Batman. So it's pretty interesting that Dick Grayson is the one to come forward with this unique little trait that is embedded into his additional hand accessories, which technically come default on the figure, but for the posterity of the review, I thought I'd throw in the gripping hands, which are a little strange because he doesn't come with any kind of separate accessories like a batarang or a grapple or anything like that. But technically speaking, he's got these semi-gripping hands that you can definitely put on his person and have him hold a separate gadget that comes with a different form of Batman. Or like some other people have noted, you can have him holding his cape and extending it in a very flying position via those hands. But if you want to make him look a little bit more antagonizing or aggressive, he does come with these kind of clutching, reaching out hands to then replicate probably one of Batman's famous poses, which is to kind of 
you know, f- flying forward and reaching out like Batman Beyond, the Brave and the Bold Batman, etc. So, you know, different little poses that you can do with his hands. And I've always liked it when the hands are a little bit more on the gesture side as far as the way that they're articulated versus generic, you know, casual holding hands or casual fists, etc. So I always liked it when they add personality to the hands. So that's really cool. But not as cool as these electro fist brass, not necessarily brass knuckles, but it's really interesting that they decided to have his fist hands have the electro knuckles right on top right there. So brandishing the top of his knuckles are these bat symbols with what I'm assuming are going to be these electro strips via the blue paint job that they added on top of the strip right there. And I got to be honest, I really dig these. I really like the way that they're sculpted, the way that they're painted, and it just adds this unique kind of flair to the fist hands. Granted, I really, if I had to like swap out or, you know, kind of come up with a last minute nitpick right here, it would be that the gripping hands, I would have swapped them out for neutral fist hands that didn't come with the uh, electro knuckles. But in terms of, like I said, giving us something that's a little bit more on the unique side and something that you traditionally don't see too much bundled in with the Batman, I can actually really respect these things coming with him and seeing that whenever you're going to be bending the wrist joint inwards and outwards the hands are going to come off anyways you might as well take that opportunity to pose them with these pretty badass electro knuckles in my opinion they really do a good job of really flaring up and really making the dick grayson batman just a little bit more showy and most importantly more unique and more akin to his personality and make sure that he is going to be leaving his own mark as the caped crusader and by that distinction the dick grayson batman here is a pickup especially if you're able to find them during circulation right now with specific walmarts eventually when it comes to target or if you do happen to have a pre-order on standby for that bundle or that case through mcfarland toy store entertainment or big toys or whatever however is he the end-all be-all is he a definitive batman and a figure of the year contender not necessarily, because I feel like a few of those cruxes limiting the articulation and the possibility of the wrists, the head sculpt as far as being able to move it all about and tilting it down, and the material utilized for the cape could have been a little bit better. Those objective complaints that I have aside, there's other things that kind of rear back but lean more towards the subjectiveness as far as me not vibing necessarily with the d- design of the cowl, the way that the slimmer down look he has as the Dick Grayson Batman, but that's just me personally. If you really enjoyed his turn as the Dark Knight, I would say that them repurposing and retooling th- one of the best bugs that they've released in some time, which has to be the Nightfall Batman, and then kind of using that to favor the Dick Grayson version as far as possibility, handling of the figure, and then again kind of elevating the bar by making sure that we still have some form of felt fabric, felt material cape with a wired for possibility still manages to really speak as far as really catering to the collector, even if it means that you're getting a little bit of a 2 to $3 price increment. But at least you know exactly where that money is going to, and you can see right here that it's still a pretty worthwhile Batman. And it's going to be because of this unique flair that he's going to be able to skate by on a very, very, very low 8 out of 10. Again, it's mainly because of unique points for those electroshock knuckles as well as the, the cape and just standing out with something much more unique. There's enough going for him to then put him up on the shelf and be like, you know what? He still stands on his own even if there's some traits that are lifted from some prior figures. Most for the best, but a couple for the worst. Have you guys delved into the Batman Reborn storyline as far as the comics are concerned? Do you really like that Dick Grayson is the new Batman? And is that enough right here to warrant the pickup for this figure? Are you looking out for the platinum that is blue? Initially, I wanted to hunt down that blue platinum because of the different shade of coloring, but at the same time, now coming across some of the issues that I I personally came across with this figure right here and how they didn't necessarily speak to me, I think I can get, kind of do without it, but that's just where I'm sitting at. Where are you guys sitting at? Let me know down below, and while you're down there, hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. Thumbs down if you did not. Shout out to our executive producers over at the level 2 tier, Tom Bowling. And as always, I want you guys to stay humble, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.